Good morning, folks. Rolando Lagustre using the Eye Telescope in New Mexico, giving us our shots of the day. Comet Ison, 24 days to perihelion. NASA's JPO orbital diagram was updated November 2nd, and not much changed. But it made me realize that about the time Ison might get hit with that backside CME that we showed yesterday, it's going to go from light to dark blue on the trajectory line at the same time. This is where it punches through Earth's orbital plane, which means that puts the comet in more of the line of fire for that CME. We also see why the trajectory is light blue on the way out. The comet will swing back up through our orbital plane on the far side of the sun during close approach. We are still expecting the comet to light up in a big way as half of the surface volatiles are unexposed to solar wind. We'll also watch for flare induction and potential global eruptions as the body approaches perihelion. Now the latest on Bruce Gary's site is they see no forward facing jet. This is in multiple images. His updates are posted daily. Some of the bigger stories about this comet are a wait and see exercise until close approach. My favorite buoy south of Bali and his two buddies turned off. This comes two weeks after minor deviations set them into event mode. And if you didn't know I had a favorite buoy, please see the video Disturbance Under the Ocean. Something strange is going on beneath the waves. Since that video, these buoys get switched off, moved, data removed every time we see more seafloor activity. Typhoon Crosa, still aiming at Vietnam, but has been shred and knocked apart, sending most moisture over Japan actually. In addition, you can see to the south that we have major storming developing, two systems coming over the Philippines, one after the other. Coming to Australia and New Zealand, where the precip and storms are nothing locals can't handle, but late week through next weekend, we will see the bushfire zone actually under isolated flash flood risks. Quite the turn. Lows piecing together and feeding off each other, sending crest after crest into Europe. Major snow coming to the north. Looking at NOAA's American forecast, you see rain coming up and wrapping around the low pressure with snow on the back side of the low. You should be used to that pattern by now, but at present, Lorena in the Pacific is being cannibalized and adding to that rain and storms heading north up the leading edge, coming around to freeze over the Rockies. Gamma ray burst last night, the southern celestial hemisphere out of gross. The solar flaring is neither upticking nor quiet. Still have some M flares, one of which may have another one of these weak glancing blows. CME popped in Earth's direction. Looking for more flaring now leaves us in a different position than we've been in for days. The southern Earth facing group is now turning away and has lost magnetic complexity. Completely. No more delta there. The development up north was borne by polar, and the question here will be one of umbral growth. Leaving us with the incoming beast. The sunspot group hasn't bested a C9.9. And that, as much as anything else, is indicative of the solar magnetic shutdown underlying this maximum, our focus for nearly two years. Solar wind showing a weak potential impact this morning, speed and temperature slightly elevated but with lower density, unlikely to be of major effect. Coronal hole is earth facing directly today. The quake uptick continued with another six pointer yesterday and uptick signals in all the right places. Saturn is 24 hours from perfect conjunction with the Sun and the next coronal holes can be seen heading in on the equator. Got shots of our star to close. That incoming active region is the top watch along with the seismographs. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.